is she dreaming? Taylor Swift coldly threw Meg's handwritten letter in the trash. I choose Wales. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Taylor Swift declined Meghan's handwritten invite to her podcast. She is one smart cookie. I think Meghan deliberately tried to make people change from Team William Wales to Team Sussex, but only faced rejections. I didn't use the word win them over because she's not capable of that. After the 2016 PR disaster, Taylor seems to be very careful and particular about who she associates with. Taylor values her fame in the sense that she keeps her mouth shut when exposed to certain shady things she's done or stayed quiet on and lets her publicist do the talking and cleaning up for her while she comes up with new content as a distraction. Plus, majority of her fan base are self-righteous girls that have grown up with her music since they were five. Her maturity level hasn't exceeded 15 yet, so she built up a loyal fan base who will disregard any shady thing she's done. Megan thinks she could flash those veneers and left eye tears and people would clamor for her. Taylor's very aware of the fact that Megan's a very polarizing figure, and it makes sense she declined to be associated with her at this point in her career, although she did have some questionable moments over in the past two months. There would be no need for Taylor to do any podcast at all, let alone Megan's, so Megan inviting her is so delusional. The fact that all big names such as Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton were never in the talks to be interviewed by Megan tells you enough. Mrs. Obama, in particular, subtly disassociated herself from the Sussexes since the Oprah interview, and she did it so well. Pretty much all of Meghan's life is delusional, starting with her trying to erase her childhood, especially her father, after writing about him, giving speeches thanking him for telling her to make her own box. That is one more saying she stole from someone else. Her delusional thoughts are that if clothing exists and costs more than many people's yearly income, she would look good in them. Her title should be Meghan, Duchess of Delusion. Meghan Markle has always been a relative nobody in the world of celebrity. Harry is the only somebody in that marriage. Even though he's done a spectacular job bringing his royal reputation to the pits, but it doesn't change the fact that he is a royal. Exactly what is likable or attractive about Meghan Markle? By all accounts, Meghan has more or less always been known to be aloof toward people until she finds them useful. Her childhood friends, her uni friends, people in the circle she auditioned with, deal or no deal colleagues, her old agents, suits crew, and people who worked on the magazine and brand photo shoots. A lot of people prior to Harry have all said the same thing. She was reserved and determined and acted like she was better than you. She was super nice and fun if you were her friend or later a rich or famous person. Megan's primary skill is networking. Right from the deal or no deal day, she was very keen on making connections. In fact, some say that getting together with Trevor was also networking. She charmed and bamboozled him and he seemed to be very ambitious, outgoing, go-getter sort of a person which to a mid-twenties struggling actress with no assignments, no gigs, lofty ambitions, seemed like the ultimate catch. She was always charming and bubbly and got out, but there's some evidence from her own writing and speeches that the persona was something she put for the specific pur purpose of getting forward in life and may have actually found it a bit exhausting at times. It was only when she got suits, moved to Toronto, and started mingling with the social set there that her networking finally started paying off. She became a medium fish in a biggish bowl. That's when she divorced Trevor and finally unleashed the full force of influencer, cover girl, supermodel, Hollywood star, girly, cute, ditzy, fun, adventurous, smart, casual, just like Rachel Zane in real life, Megan. She was about 31, 32 at that time. What's cute at 27 or 30 or 32 or even 34 is not so cute at 38 or 40. It's barely tolerable. 
mainly because with you, your audience also ages and hence, in most cases, gains some discernment skills. So they're able to sense if it's all for show or if you are uncomfortable or not being your authentic self. That's why her behavior now is ridiculous and intolerable to most people. Also, earlier when she was merely doing it to get name recognition and climb the career ladder, but now she's struggling very hard to be liked. And to get the respect she thinks she deserves, which never ends well. If she wants to have another go at the TIG, she's going to have to change her target audience to women her age, because no matter how much PR she puts out, she is no longer young. Megan has been playing dress up in an effort to fake her way through the royal connection into everybody and anybody's lives, making them believe she's somebody she's not. Meghan Markle was unworthy of her husband's status, but was given the opportunity to strive to gain her own earned respect on a world stage that royals have held for hundreds of years. And she totally blew it with all her grandiose selfishness. She's certainly not on par with Taylor Swift or any celebrity of that caliber. Of course, people of the upper epsilon of celebrity look upon her as a grasping wannabe freak. She's only sending letters because they've blocked her from their cell phones. Taylor is a great example of an intelligent mind with narcissistic tendencies, as she acknowledged so in Antihero. She put in the work to match. Her artistry is undoubtedly at the height of her career. People will adore her no matter what. Her era's tours have become a cultural and economic phenomenon. Megan of Hertz wishes she had the same pull, but she will make do with starting a feud to bask in a smidge of Taylor's aura. Megan might think she was labeled too, so she can talk in word salads about herself and leave Taylor Swift out of most of the conversation. Weren't all of the archetypes talked about on the podcast something Megan was called at one point? Since it seems that Megan isn't able to come up with an idea on her own, I did what I thought she would do, googled Taylor Swift and negative archetypes. So she probably would have used the treacherous tempstress thing, as we all know Megan feels she carries that label too. More and more people who are either infamous in their own right or are connected to those who have begun talking. No one is afraid to speak, and unlike what allegedly happened between Tyler Perry and Bethany Frankel, no one is throwing their weight around either, threatening people, or asking them nicely to not speak to Megan. If a wealthy connected family is willing to dish to Tom Bowers that Harry was so bold to not only ask for the use of their home, but also their private jet, Trust and believe employees from Gimlet, Spotify, Netflix, and even Archwell, NDA be damned, will be happy to speak to the press now that it's no longer sacrilege to speak constructively about them. No one is scared of them, and they're no longer acting out of respect for Her Majesty the Late Queen. It's honestly insane how badly these two ruined things to the degree they are. That takes true effort. They only have themselves to blame. And while Harry will always have a safe place to land, Meghan is going to have to head to the Emirates like Fergie ended up doing to secure funds, because Harry sure as D won't have any money left by the end of this mess. What do you think about Taylor Swift's harsh reaction to Meghan Markle? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.